back to the Amateur Radio Technician License course. Are you having fun yet? Well, I hope you are anyway. Um, when I worked at NASA, one of the things I loved uh, was telling people that I had friends that were out of this world. Thanks to NASA installing uh, two amateur radio stations on board the International Space Station, you can have some friends that are out of this world too. Once you're licensed, you can uh, talk to them using an inexpensive handheld transceiver and a high-gain antenna that you can purchase, or you could easily build one yourself. Are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. Now, this is Lesson 5, Part 2. I'm your instructor, Gary Stevens, KE2GS. In this section, uh, we're going to be covering electrical principles, uh, particularly capacitance, inductance, uh, current flow in circuits, alternating current, uh, definition of uh, RF, or radio frequency, definition of polarity, uh, DC power calculations, and impedance. Shown in this slide is the construction of a basic capacitor. It's simply uh, two metal plates separated by a dielectric, or an insulator. A capacitor is an electrical component that stores energy in an electric field, while capacitance is how we measure its ability to do so. Uh, for the exam, all you need to know is that capacitance is the ability to store energy in an electric field. Capacitance is measured in units called farads, or a farad. One farad is defined as the capacitance across which there is a potential difference of one volt when charged with one coulomb. Farad is named in uh, honor of the English physicist uh, Michael Faraday. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that the farad is the basic unit of capacitance. Inductor is an electrical component that's usually composed of a coil of wire around a central core. An inductor uh, differs from a capacitor in that it stores the energy in a magnetic field as opposed to a, an electric field. Um, inductance is how we measure this ability. For the exam, understand that inductance is the ability to store energy in a magnetic field. Inductance is measured in a unit called Henry. Uh, its symbol is a capital H. It's named after Joseph Henry who independently discovered electromagnetic induction. Uh, for the exam, know that the Henry is the basic unit of induction. Hertz is simply an alternating current frequency of one cycle per second. For the exam, Hertz is a unit of frequency. Radio frequency ranges from sub-audible to uh, or extremely low frequency to the terahertz range called tremendously high frequency. For the exam, just know that RF refers to radio frequency signals of all types. As we discussed earlier in uh, previous sections, uh, radio waves are made up of electromagnetic energy. Uh, so that's what you need to know for the exam. As we recall, power is expressed in watts, but how is it calculated? The formula is power equals current times voltage. Uh, get out a sheet of paper and draw a pie circle or pie chart uh, like the one shown. I want you to memorize this because this will help you solve problems on the exam. Uh, the way that this works is you place your thumb or finger over what you want to calculate or solve for. By placing your finger or, uh, on or over the, the P, you could see that P equals I times E. If you place uh, your finger over the I, you could see that it equals... Uh, 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 P over E, or P divided by E. Uh, but for the exam, understand that power equals voltage multiplied times current is the formula used to calculate electric power in a DC circuit. For test question uh, Tango 5 Charlie 0 Niner, we are solving for P. We are given the values 13.8 uh, volts and 10 amps. Uh, we know that P equals I times E, so we plug in the values and multiply 10 times 13.8 and get 138. Uh, since we're solving for power, it is expressed in watts. For the exam, uh, you need to know that 138 watts is how much power is being used in a circuit when the applied voltage is 13.8 volts DC and the current is 10 amperes. 
The next question, we're also solving for P. We're given the values of 12 volts and 2.5 amps. We know that P equals I times E, so we plug in the values and multiply 2.5 times 12 and get 30. Since we're solving for power, it's expressed in watts. For the exam, know that 30 watts is how much power is being used in a circuit when the applied voltage is of 12 volts DC and the current is 2.5 amperes. For question Tango 5, uh, Charlie 11, uh, we are solving for I. We are given the values of 12 volts and 120 watts. By placing your finger over the I, we see that we need to divide P by E to get the answer. So we plug in our values uh, and divide 120 by 12 and get 10. Since we're solving for current, it is expressed in amperes or amps, so the answer is 10 amps. For the exam, know that uh, 10 amperes is flowing in a circuit when the applied voltage is 12 volts DC and the load is 120 watts. Impedance is the opposition to electric current in a circuit. It applies uh, specifically to alternating current. Uh, it also uh, is important because the uh, feed line uh, needs to be the same impedance as your transmitter output as well as the uh, input to your antenna. Exam know that impedance is a measure of the opposition to AC current flow in a circuit. It was Oliver Heaviside who coined the term impedance. Remember for the exam that ohms is the unit of impedance. It is important to use the proper abbreviations uh, when expressing values in the metric system. Uh, for example, 1mm, all lowercase, uh, would mean one millimeter, whereas one capital M followed by a lowercase m would mean one megameter, the difference being only about 2.28 million miles. For the exam, know that capital M, capital H, lowercase z is the proper abbreviation for megahertz. Next up is uh, Ohm's Law. We're going to be talking about formulas and usage. Uh, components in series and in parallel. For Ohm's Law, we can use our familiar pie chart, but instead of uh, P over I times E, we can substitute E over I times R. For the exam, know that the formula uh, current equals voltage divided by resistance is used to calculate current in a circuit. You also need to know that uh, the formula voltage equals current multiplied by resistance is used to calculate voltage in a circuit. Likewise, you need to know that the formula for resistance equals voltage divided by current is used to calculate resistance in a circuit. In question uh, Tango 5 Delta 04, we are asked to solve for resistance uh, given a current of 3 amps and 90 volts. Uh, covering the R on the chart, we see that R is equal to E divided by I. We plug in the values and divide 90 by 3. Since uh, resistance is measured in ohms, our answer is expressed with the Greek symbol for omega, which is the electronic symbol for the ohms. Uh, for the exam, know that 30 ohms is the resistance of a circuit in which a current of 3 amps flows through a resistor connected to 90 volts. In the next question, we are asked to uh, solve for resistance given a current of 1.5 amps and 12 volts. Covering R on the chart, we see that uh, R is equal to E divided by I. We plug in the values and divide 12 by 1.5, and that gives us an answer of 8 we're expressing it in ohms. For the exam, know that 8 ohms is the resistance of a circuit in which the applied voltage is 12 and the current is 1.5 amperes. In the next question, we are asked to solve for resistance given a current of 4 amps and 12 volts. Uh, covering R on the chart, we can see that R is equal to E divided by I. Again, plug in the values and divide 12 by 4. That gives us an answer of 3 and we express it in ohms. For the exam, know that 3 ohms is the resistance of a circuit that draws 4 amperes from a 12 volt source. 
In the question Tango 5 Delta 07, we were asked to solve for current given a voltage of 120 volts and 80 ohms of resistance. Covering the I on the chart, we can see that I is equal to E divided by R. Again, we plug in the values and divide 120 by 80. That gives us an answer of 1.5 and we express it in amps. For the exam, know that 1.5 amperes is the current in a circuit with an applied voltage of 120 volts and a resistance of 80 ohms. In the next question, we are asked to solve uh, for current given the voltage of 200 volts and a resistance of 100 ohms. Covering the I on the chart, we see that uh, I is equal to E divided by R. Again, plug in the values and divide 200 by 100 gives us an answer of 2, and we express that in amps. For the exam, know that 2 amperes is the current through a 100 ohm resistor connected across 200 volts. The next question we are asked to solve for current, given a voltage of 240 volts and a resistance of 24 ohms. Covering the I on the chart, we see that I is equal to E divided by R. Uh, again, we plug in the values and divide 240 by 24. That gives us an answer of 10, and we express that in amps. So for the exam, know that 10 amperes is the current through a 24-ohm resistor connected across 240 volts. In question Tango 5 Delta 10, we are asked to solve for voltage given a current of 0.5 amps and a resistance of 2 ohms. Covering E on the chart, we see that E is equal to I times R. Again, we plug in the values and multiply 0 0.5 by 2. That gives us an answer of 1, and we express that in volts. For the exam, know that 1 volt is the voltage across a 2 ohm resistor if a current of 0 0.5 amperes flows through it. In the next question, we are asked again to solve for voltage given a current of 1 amp and a resistance of 10 ohms. So covering the uh, chart, we see that E equals I times R. Again, we plug in the values and multiply 1 times 10. That gives us an answer of 10, and we express that in volts. Uh, for the exam, know that 10 volts is the voltage across a 10 ohm resistor. If the current is 1 amp, it flows through it. The last question of this lesson we are asked to solve for voltage given a current of 2 amps and a resistance of 10 ohms. Covering the E in the chart, we see that E equals I times R. Again, we plug in the values, multiply 2 times 10. That gives us an answer of 20, and we express it in volts. For the exam, know that 20 volts is the voltage across a 10 ohm resistor if the current of 2 amps as flows through it. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I forgot to mention that you're allowed to use a simple calculator on the exam. You can't use the one on your smartphone, though, or you can't use one with memories or, you know, with the high-tech calculators like a, uh, um, a statistical calculator. Uh, but you can use a simple one. Uh, you could even use one that uh, has sine and cosine uh, or scientific functions. In fact, that's a good idea if you plan on uh, going on and pursuing the general and the, uh, the extra license as well. Um, if you like this series, please uh, show your support by subscribing to my YouTube channel. Until next time, never stop learning.